It was one of the first places to develop a culture around wine spreading the vine throughout Europe. After losing recognition internationally for a while, Greece is again an exciting wine country producing distinctive styles from autochthonous grape varieties. Today I'm going to taste some great examples from Greece to see what's really going on in the country that brought us Dionysus and Retsina. So let's dive into the world of Greek wine. Yamas. Greece is a fairly small wine growing country with 64,000 hectares of vineyards. According to Wines of Greece, these vineyards are farmed by 180,000 growers, but most of them just do this as a side hustle. There are more than 1,200 wineries and they work with hundreds of different autochthonous grape varieties, grape varieties that originate from Greece. Roughly 90% of the plantings are indigenous, which makes it more difficult to understand Greek wine and pronounce the wine names, but it also makes it more exciting to discover this country. The varieties include the white Savatiano, the most widely planted grape variety in Greece, the pink-skinned Moscofiliero, the most highly regarded grape variety coming out of Greece is probably Asiatico. Agiogitico is the most widely planted red grape variety, while Xenomafro is considered to be the Barolo of Greece. And there are many, many more that you should discover. But now let's taste those wines. So let's start off in Santorini, the most popular holiday destination for influencers, but it's also one of the most distinctive terroirs in the wine world. The island is really part of a huge crater of a volcano that erupted thousands of years ago. The soil here is very volcanic, dark and it's extremely windy as well. I remember well trying to fly my drone last time I was in Santorini and not really being able to get anywhere so I had to leave it on the ground and just take some photos instead. That's also the reason why they have a very different type of viticulture. The vines are formed shaped like baskets and they are right on the ground. The grapes grow inside those baskets in order to protect them from the wind and the heat and yeah, all those weird conditions that you have on that island that really shape the taste and the texture of the wines. Some of those vineyards are hundreds of years old with really gnarly old vines. And nowadays they really have to compete with the tourism sector. So if you just pull out those vineyards and build a hotel onto the same plot of land, you might be able to make much more money than what you would be able to make from the wine, but most winemakers still want to protect the heritage. One of those wineries is Agiros, and this is the 2018 Monsignori. This comes from their oldest vineyards, which are apparently 200 years old, and the vines here are ungrafted and they produce very little yield, apparently only just about 14 hectoliters per hectare, which is just yeah, a tiny, tiny yield. The wine is fermented and aged in stainless steel, which kind of ensures that you get this pure expression of Asiatico, which is a delicious grape variety. Asiatico can produce outstanding wines and I've tasted this wine before and I don't think this vintage, but, but this wine and I was really, really impressed with it. So I hope this one tastes just like the ones I've had. <laughs> Didn't expect that, huh? All right, let's taste. Okay, the color is pale yellow, a little golden, a bit more concentrated quite clean and clear. The wine smells of lemon tart, so lemon, but also some creaminess, which comes from the maturation on the dead yeast cells. So this is quite complex already, but then there's also a little bit of saltiness, brininess, which is very typical for Asiatico from Santorini. They say that the saltiness comes from the sea spray landing on the grapes and then ending up in the wine. This might be true, but there's certainly this really salty dimension to Asiatico. On the palate, this is super fresh and lively. Asiatico tends to have a lot of acidity, and this is grippy and extremely fresh. So fresh. This is super lively. So even though this wine has a lot of acidity, it also has quite a lot of body, actually. This is 14 ABV, so 14% of alcohol but you don't, you don't sense that at all because of this massively laser-focused, fresh acidity. You know, I'm used to the acidity of a Riesling 
And if you taste lots of Rieslings, this can be really hard on your gums and teeth. But I imagine tasting a lot of Aceticos side by side in one tasting must be extremely difficult. I can already sense my enamel kind of disappearing. This is a great start, a super fresh, vibrant wine, and I can really see myself sitting on Santorini overlooking the ocean eating some fresh fish and drinking this perfect that's like that's life goals one day one day well actually i've done that before but but yeah one day i'll be able to just do that maybe so i'm going to rate this 93 points i think this is absolutely delicious really precise fresh long great wine. So next up, we're moving to the Peloponnese, the largest areas when it comes to vineyard plantings. And we're going to taste a Mantinia, a wine made from the Moscow Fierro grape variety. The vineyards of Mantinia are at higher elevations, meaning that you have a cooler microclimate in the vineyards. And this wine is made from the Moscow Fierro grape variety. Moscow Fierro has pinkish skins, so you can actually also make a rosé wine out of Moscow Fierro quite easily. It's a little bit like Pinot Gris, so a white grape variety that has slightly pinkish skins, so it contains some color. And if you leave the skins in contact with the juice or the wine, then you end up having some color in your white wine. This is the 2022 Bosinakis Winery Mantinia, and the winery was established in 1992, really focusing on the grape variety Moscow Fierro. The soil is clay-based where the grapes grow, and the only thing I really know about the winemaking is that they do a six hour cold maceration pre-fermentation, which might lead to this wine being a little bit pinkish as well. And then they really extract quite a lot of flavor from the lees as well as they do lee steering. But yeah, that's kind of it. So let's taste it. All right. Yeah, there is a little bit of color. Look at that. It's really delicate, but there's a little bit of a pinkish hue. Moscow Fierro is a fairly aromatic grape variety and you get quite a lot of aroma from this. This smells of peaches, lychee. It's quite aromatic, but really fruit driven, really precise. And I really like this. On the palate, this is grippy and intense, really refreshing and lively. Quite a delicious little wine. Not, not too serious. I mean, this is really fun but but I, I i really enjoy this this feels really light on its feet even though it has 13.5 percent of alcohol but yeah I, I think this is just such a crowd pleaser i mean this is for serious wine drinkers who want to nerd out about greek autochthonous grape varieties but this is also something for wine novices people who usually don't drink wine because this is just so fruity and fresh and really 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 nice so yeah i'm going to rate this 90 points i think this is just absolutely delicious it's not serious enough to get more points i think but but it's just in its simple way it's just pretty beautiful next up we have a wine style that greece is most famous or infamous for and that's Retsina. Retsina is usually made from the white grape variety Savatiano, oftentimes with some Rodites and Asetico blended in. And then the winemakers also add some pine resin to give the wine a completely different, slightly weird kind of flavor. The history of this wine style can be traced back to ancient Greece, where resin was used in order to make sure that amphoras don't leak. But nowadays it's obviously more of a curiosity. Many people go to Greece on holidays, drink Retsina there, and it's kind of fun, but it's also ruining the reputation of Greek wine in a way, because oftentimes those Retsinas are really, really bad. So I'm hoping that this one will be one of the really, really good Retsinas. So this is the 2022 Kechis Tier of the Pine Retsina from Thessaloniki. And I've tasted that before in Greece and I really enjoyed it. So let's, let's open it up. Stelios Kechis founded this winery after studying enology in Dijon. And he really wanted to bring 
reputation back for Retsina. So he really wanted to focus on producing great Retsina. This one is made from Asiatico, 100% Asiatico. And yeah, let's, let's see how this tastes. The way this wine style is usually made is that small pieces of Aleppo resin are added to the must during fermentation. This flavor will end up in the wine. And then at the end of the fermentation, they take it all out and the wine ends up smelling a little bit like pine tree. So this is kind of golden in color, light golden with a touch of brown even. So on the nose, there's this beautiful balance. There's some ripe fruit character, a little bit of apple, lemon, pear flavors, but then there's also this delicate, but quite present pine resin flavor. So, so it's balanced, but you can definitely sense that this is not a normal wine. On the palate, this is extremely fresh, linear and long. It doesn't feel heavy. You can certainly sense that the quality of the base wine is really high. This is not usually the case when it comes to Rizzina. So this is a really well-made Rizzina. Still, this flavor, the pine flavor is something that not everyone will like. But in the end, I mean, keeping wine in oak barrels obviously also significantly changes the flavor of the wine. So this is not much different in my opinion, it's just a different kind of flavor. But, but yeah, it's, it's traditional. And this is a cultural product with a long history and there are some interesting, funky, weird and strange stars still around and I really appreciate that. There's also real saltiness on the finish, which is really great. Delicious wine, I'm going to rate this 91 points. I think it is just beautiful, really profound. Would I want to drink a bottle of this? I don't think so, but um, yeah, a glass with the right meal. But but I wonder what do you eat with Ritzina? I mean, let me know. Let me know down below if you have any ideas, any suggestions. But yeah, this is this is good stuff. So we're moving on to the reds. And this is a grape variety that I find really interesting. Limiona. It's a grape variety that most people I think won't have heard of but it produces really delicious wines if handled properly. This is the 2021 Methimon Limiona from Dugos. Dugos? Dugos. Let's open it. The winery was started in 1991 and this is also when this vineyard was planted at 520 meters of elevation. Again, the higher you go, the cooler the microclimate gets in the vineyard. And yeah, I mean, Limiona for me is a little bit like Merlot. I think it has this kind of velvetiness that you know from Merlot. It can be really round and rich, but usually it's a little bit lighter and it has those intense cherry and blackberry flavors. They also work with really low yields here at 28 hectoliters per hectare. They don't add anything so the fermentation is spontaneous no filtration and they use used barrels in order to age this one i think i need to rinse this glass out because otherwise this will definitely smell of pine resin so kind of paler in color not very dark it's a little bit cloudy because it wasn't filtered and it's, yeah, it's purple. Hmm. This has a very nice aroma. It smells of ripe cherries, blackberries, plums. So it's quite bright, really fruit driven. Not The oak is not really uh, detectable. On the palate, this is really velvety, juicy, and it, it tastes like eating cherries, like fresh cherries from the tree. That's kind of what, what it feels like. Obviously it's not sweet, but it has this really intense cherry flavor. The tannins are ripe, but more moderate, low to moderate in intensity. And the acidity is moderate and fresh. So this is really a juicy little red wine. So I'm going to rate this 89 points. I think it is just really bright and fresh and really good. It's It doesn't have like the complexity some of the other ones had, but this is a really nice little red. If you have a barbecue, have this together with a steak, that's just 
Beautiful. So now we're moving on to one of the most famous red grape varieties from Greece, Xinomafo. This example is from Nausa, a region that is really associated with Xinomaflo. But the grape variety is also grown in other parts of Greece. What makes it quite special is that it's really similar in style to Nebbiolo, even though I don't think there is a relationship there. But it's light in color, usually really intense tannins, fresh acidity and quite a complex, exciting wine. In the PDO in Nausa, you're only allowed to use Xenomaflo and the vines grow on the southeastern slopes of Mount Vermillo at 150 to 400 meters in elevation. But now let's taste this wine. This is the 2019 Ramnista from Kier Yanni. It's a Xenomaflo from Nausa. The winery started in 1997 when Yannis Butaris left his really famous family wine business and founded this estate. They really focus on Xenomafo and produce some of the most well-known wines from that grape variety. They do cold maceration, punch downs, pump overs, and they mature the wines for 16 months in French barrels, some of which new. So as you can see, this is quite pale in color. It's kind of see-through. It's also browning a little bit, really like Nebbiolo, not a dense and concentrated red wine color wise more of a light colored red on the nose this shows really bright cherry fruit flavors again strawberries a little bit of raspberries as well so flavor wise this is more pinot-esque not really yeah not really a big red wine more of a fine elegant red the oak is actually really well integrated there's a little bit of pepperiness there in flavor which might come from the grapes but could also be from the oak but yeah it's a really complex complex nose on the palate this is grippy really intensely grippy good acidity as well there's also quite a lot of body there but it, yeah it, it's really structured which is absolutely typical for Xenomafo might make it a little bit more challenging in in its youth but but yeah it also kind of makes this wine really distinctive and special so i'm going to rate this 94 points i think it's absolutely delicious really balanced even though it's still a little young and you should definitely eat some meat with this or something eat eat something with this you don't have to eat meat but um yeah something to make sure that the tannins don't become overpowering. Last but not least, let's go to Nemea, a region that really focuses on the grape variety Agiogitico, which is the most widely planted red grape variety in Greece. This is also a really famous estate. They actually have a winery in Santorini, on Santorini, focusing on Asiatico. And this winery in Nemea focusing on Agiogitico. They also use some other grape varieties, but those are the focuses. At both estates, they really try to make the best wines possible. So this is made from 100% Agiogitico. The grapes grew on clay and limestone soils. And the wine was aged in barriques, but I don't really have any information on how old the barrels were, but maybe I, I can taste it. Let's find out. The vineyards here are again at higher altitudes, 450 to 500 meters. And that's kind of a common thread in many places in Greece. They're trying to go a little bit more up in altitude in order to produce high quality wines. So my last shot, three, two, one. Well, that was airball. All right, this is definitely dark in color. This is kind of dark purple. It's not the darkest wine I've ever seen, but compared to the Xenomafro, it's actually pretty dark. The flavor profile is also really different. This feels a little bit more Bordeaux-esque, really, not like you're in Barodo. This is quite concentrated and rich. There's some blackberry, some cassis flavor coming through pretty good. I can also smell some oak flavors, so I would guess that they've used some new barriques in the winemaking process, but it's well integrated. So it's not, it doesn't stand out. It's really well integrated in the fruit character. On the palate, this is dense, concentrated with ripe tannins, good freshness though. So this is a really beautifully balanced wine. And while I think the Xenomafo might be something for people who are more experimental, this is actually really for someone who usually drinks Bordeaux 
just taste this and and this is this is really good slightly different but it's not completely out of the box so a really beautiful wine there's even a little bit of mintiness coming through at the end really refreshing no this is great stuff i'm going to rate this 94 points as well what a fascinating tasting greece has a lot to offer obviously they have a lot of history when it comes to winemaking but i certainly can see a bright future for the country as well those wines were all delicious really distinctive different some of them might be a little bit yeah not not as easy to approach but but they actually have real character, show real beauty, and were really outstanding. I mean, what a nice tasting. So my wines of the tasting. I really thought this was the best wine in terms of quality, but I, I'm definitely going to serve this at a party in the future at my house, because this is just delicious. And I was also really impressed by the Gaia Estate Nemea. What a delicious concentrated wine. A little bit more international in style maybe, but just beautiful. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what is your favorite Greek wine? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope I see you guys very soon. Until then, stay thirsty. <laughs>